नम ओम विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामिनि जी नमने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवानि प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादि पाश्चात्य देश चारिणे श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so here we are off the sunny coast west coast of india in between the gujarat mainland and big dwarka we've been visiting the temple of lord dwarka dish krishna at big dwarka and this is an ideal place to discuss bhagavad gita which was spoken by lord krishna especially we're on the topic of the Vishva Rupa, the universal form. We are reading today from this chapter, chapter 11, text 45 to 52, with translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of Iskand. Here's text 45. Adrishta purvam hrishito smi drishtva bhayena cha pravyati tang mano me tadeva me darshaya deva rupang prasida devesha jagan nivasa Arjuna says, After seeing this universal form, which I have never seen before, I am gladdened, but at the same time, my mind is disturbed with fear. Therefore, please bestow your grace upon me and reveal again your form as the personality of Godhead, O Lord of Lords, O, Ab o Abode of the Universe. Kiri dinang chakrahastam ichami twang drashtam ahang tataiva Tainaiva rupena chatur bhujena sahasra baho bhava vishva murte. O universal form, O thousand armed lord, I wish to see you in your four armed form, with helmeted head and with club, wheel, conch, and lotus flower in your hands. I long to see you in that form. So let's take a little recap. Arjuna has just been shown the Vishvarup of Krishna, the form of Krishna which encompasses the whole universe, which shows that although Krishna, we generally think of him as two-armed, Bangsiwali, holding the flute, stealing the butter, but he is non-different from everything in the universe. He is the source of everything in the universe. Everything in the universe is within him. So Arjuna, he knew that Krishna, he is my friend, he is also God. But he always thought of Krishna as my friend. And in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna has been describing to Arjuna how he, Krishna, is supreme. Now Arjuna, he accepted this philosophically, but he wanted some visual confirmation of this. As it said, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. So, philosophically, we may be convinced of something, but if we can see it, then we really become convinced. That's why people often say to us, can you show me God? Because the idea is that, well, if, if we can see God, then we would believe in Him. Often people don't believe. They see the form of Krishna and they think, well, it's just like a man like me. And that's maya, that's illusion, to think that because Krishna has a form, something like you or me, it looks like that, that he's just an ordinary person. So here Krishna has shown to Arjuna his terrific form, encompassing the whole universe and everything within it. And it's very fearful to Arjuna. Arjuna is basically a fearless person. He's a fighter. He's a man who can go into battle against tremendous odds without, a, without any fear in him. But seeing Krishna's immense form, he has become fearful. If you, if you see something much bigger than you, naturally you become fearful. In these horror movies, they show King Kong or something like this, some massive figure. You become afraid. People, if you see a big, tall man two meters tall and strongly built, a boxer, 
then you, you become a little respectful, even though he may have the IQ of a, of a frog, but just because he's got a big body, you think, well, I have to be careful, he's, he's a big, powerful person. So Arjuna is now seeing Krishna in the universal form with, with all birth and death and time, everything taking place within him. He sees all the bodies of the great fighters on the battlefield. He's seeing in the future, not the near future. They're all entering into Krishna's, the mouths of the universal form of being smashed within his teeth. He's seeing the powerful form of time and naturally he becomes afraid. When there's something more big and more powerful, we become afraid. Just like here, we're, we're on this sea now. It's just a small stretch of sea here, a narrow strait in between the mainland and Bed Dwaraka. But you can just imagine, if you're on the whole big ocean, you might be on a big ship. But when there's, a, when there's a storm, it doesn't matter how big the ship is, it becomes insignificant, like a little matchbox. And the storm just makes the ship rock from side to side, and the sailors know they're at the mercy of the sea. The sea is much more powerful than us. That With all our technology, there's nothing we can do to face this sea, and only if it happens to become just by nature, if it becomes calm again, then we're saved. In old times, the sailors, they used to lash them. When there was a storm, they'd climb up the mast and tie themselves on. And they're just, the, the sea would be coming on and rolling. The ship would roll almost until it was completely turned over. Then it would come up again. And sometimes it would turn over. Then they'd all be finished. So the sea is immense. And it's so powerful we become awestruck at the power of the sea. But the sea is only one sea on one planet. There are millions and billions of planets and it's all within Krishna's energy. Krishna said at the, at the end of the last chapter that everything wonderful that you can see and imagine, Arjuna, that's produced by just a spark of my awesome power. And Arjuna wanted to see some representation of that. Now he's seeing it and he's wishing he hadn't seen it. It's again that example of a horror movie. You, you think, oh, that would be interesting. Let's go and see a horror movie. But then when you go, you don't want to see it because it's so fearful. And you think, when, when's it going to be over? So Arjuna is seeing Krishna's universal form but it's a representation of the material world. The very nature of the material world is that it's a world of destruction. It's fearsome. And Arjuna, seeing this, becomes fearful. And although he recognizes that this is Krishna, but this is not the Krishna that he loves. This is not Krishna, his friend. This is Krishna in another representation which is not very pleasing. So in some religious processes they say, well, you should fear God. That's true. That's a beginning of God consciousness, to fear Him. We should be afraid because if we don't, if we don't follow His orders, then due to uh, our disharmoniousness with the universal order which he has set up, then we have to suffer. We follow the laws of God or we suffer. Therefore, we should fear God. He is fearsome, but that's only a beginning aspect of understanding God. The government is fearful to the criminal. So if a religious process stresses to us, fear God, fear God, fear God, that Basically, it's talking to us as criminals. The criminals, their relationship with the government, they can't understand anything better than but that to fear it. If you don't fear, then you'll be punished. So, well, that's a beginning. But that's not love. We are supposed to love. love. God is the all-beautiful, all-loving person. 
He is Satyam Shivam Sundaram. He is all truth, all auspiciousness and all beauty. The universal form is fearful. That should be feared, but going beyond fear is the platform of loving him. But fear is a beginning because love is based on uh, mutual dealings. And the basis of that is respect. This material world is a world of exploitation. In this material world, everyone is trying to exploit everyone else, to put them under my thumb. I'll show myself to be better than you. So fear comes when we realize that someone is more powerful than us. God is infinitely more powerful than us. So it just makes sense to recognize his supremacy. But again, that is only a beginning of spiritual life. The beginning of God consciousness is to fear Him. Arjuna, he's not very satisfied with this fearful aspect of Krishna. Now he's seen it, he asked to see it, but he didn't want to remain forever seeing it. He saw it for a short time and said, that's enough. I've seen it, and it's impressive, but I don't, my relationship is not with this fearful form. Now I want to see, he's, he will say, your soul, your rupa, your very beautiful form, your chatur bhuja rupa. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, manifests himself in various forms. His two-handed form is the original, most beautiful, most loving. But Krishna, in his opulent form, here in Dwaraka, he's manifested with four hands. That's the form of great opulence. That's also a form to be loved and very much respected. The universal form, the Vishwarup, is one to be the predominant uh, mood or reciprocation with the universal form is one simply of fear. So now Arjuna is asking that now you please show me again this four-handed form of yours. Enough of the thousand or multi-thousand millions of arms, millions of legs, millions of eyes, millions of helmets. I've seen that. I'm not Attracted to that, please show me your four-handed form. Lord Krishna replies, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Maya Prasanne Natavarjune Dang Rupang Parang Darshitamatna Yogat Tejo Mayang Vishvamanantamadyang Yanme Tvadanye Nanadrishta Purvam The Supreme Personality of God had said, my dear Arjuna, happily I have shown you by my internal potency this supreme universal form within the material world. No one before you has ever seen this primal form, unlimited and full of glaring effulgence. So, what does the universal form look like? You may say. We often see artistic representations. But actually, we can't really understand. It's, it's inconceivable to us. Arjuna, he saw it. Adrishtapurvam. No one had seen this form. With the, the form was it's something like a modern movie. The, the face was changing. Or all the many faces were changing all the time. That is representative of the material world in which everything is changing all the time. So it's inconceivable. But anyway, as is being taught here, our concentration should be on that form of Krishna, the original form of Krishna, his very pleasing form, which we can reciprocate with in love. We, there's no love as such for the universal form. So, Krishna goes on to say, 
O best of the Kuru warriors, no one before you has ever seen this universal form of mind, for neither by studying the Vedas, nor by performing sacrifices, nor by charity, nor by pious activities, nor by severe penances, can I be seen in this form in the material world. So that was a great uh, boon for Arjuna. Arjuna, of course, is a very special person. He's not an ordinary person. It's not everyone who gets their chariot driven by Krishna. Krishna is to be served by everyone, but Krishna has voluntarily become the servant of Arjuna. So Arjuna is a very, very special devotee. We're all devotees of Krishna. We're all meant to be devotees of Krishna. But we learn from this incident and from so many others that our position is not only to be the servant of Krishna, but also to be the servant of his servants. If we could be the servant of Arjuna, that would be a very exalted position because Arjuna's position is very exalted as the direct friend of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, in Vaishnava philosophy or Vaishnava understanding, we know that the position of the soul is to serve God, but Vaishnava philosophy is even more developed in as much as it teaches us to serve Him through His very dear devotees. He is not alone. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is always with His devotees, and his, devo his devotees are very, very dear to Him. So if we want to be dear to Krishna, we should try to become dear to His devotees. We should try to appreciate His devotees. It's not just God and me and damn everyone else, but rather Krishna has got so many unlimited devotees, and we are to serve Krishna through His devotees. Krishna has unlimited devotees here in Dwarka, Krishna was living with so many devotees, so many famous devotees in Dwarka, 16,108 wives headed by Rukmini, and there are others also, Jambavati, Satyabhama, Kalindi, Mitravinda, the eight principal queens, and then uh, 16,100 others headed by Rohini, and Krishna's uh, most prominent devotee in Dwarka is Uddhava, and then there was, of course, Vasudev and Devaki, Satyaki, the commander of his forces, Daruka, his charioteer. So, so many wonderful and famous devotees were living with Krishna here in Dwarka. And those whose consciousness is very much developed, they will remember Krishna here. And others, well, they might go fishing. There are so many fishing boats all around us. So, there's different things you can do in the holy places. You can come to the holy place to serve the Lord, or you can become a fisherman, which isn't very auspicious. Let's go on to read text 49. Mate vyata ma chavimuta bhavo Mate vyata ma chavimuta bhavo Drishtva rupam ghauram idrin mamedam Vyapeta bhif pritamana punastvam Tadeva me rupam idam prapasya you have been perturbed and bewildered by seeing this horrible feature of mine. Now let it be finished. My devotee, be free again from all disturbances. With a peaceful mind, you can now see the form you desire. So the universal form is a form of Krishna. But Krishna himself says it's a ghora rupam. It's a horrible form. It's a fear-inspiring form. Sanjaya uvacha ityajunang vasudevas tathoktva svakang rupang dashayam asabhuyaha 
आश्वासयाम आस छी चमेन भूतवा पुनः सौम्य वूर्ण महात्मा संजय सिद्ध द्वित राष्ट्र The supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna, having spoken thus to Arjuna, displayed his real four-armed form, and at last showed his two-armed form, thus encouraging the fearful Arjuna. So, Gora Rupam, the universal form, is a fearful form of the Lord. That's a representation of the material world, but the real form of the Lord, which is very beautiful, Somyavapu, is. That of his forearm form and his two-arm form. Arjuna uvacha drishtve dang manu shang rupam tavaso myang janadana idanim asmi sang vritta sacheta prakritingata. When Arjuna thus saw Krishna in his original form, he said, "O Janadan, seeing this human-like form." So very beautiful, I am now composed in mind, and I am restored to my original nature. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Sudur Darsham Vidang Rupam Trishtavanasi Anmama Devarapyasya Rupasya Nityang Darshana Kangshinaha. The supreme personality of God had said, "My dear Arjuna." This form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form, which is so dear. So to see Krishna is not such an ordinary thing. People say, "Show me God," but to have the eyes to see Him, that He who is supreme will deign to show Himself to us, requires some. Qualification. So, a large part of the message of Bhagavad Gita is attaining the qualification to see God. What is the qualification? It doesn't need an eye operation; it needs a heart operation. In other words, our heart has to be pure. Krishna is the supreme pure. Actually, we're all seeing him. This here, here we're seeing the sea, the, the sky, the land. It's all in one sense Krishna, but we don't see Krishna because our hearts are not pure. But one whose heart is pure sees Krishna everywhere. And what is that purity of heart? The desire to serve Krishna. Krishna shows himself to those. Who desire to serve Him? This is the essence of Bhagavad Gita, that we are meant to always think of Krishna, always meant to serve Him. Then He, out of His kindness, will reveal Himself to us in His beautiful original form. Otherwise, we have to again and again see His fearful material feature of repeated birth and death. It's up to us to choose. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The ancient wisdom that you have just heard is contained in the publications of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust.